Ionic bonding and moving electrons. Bonds are forces that hold groups of atoms together and make them function as a unit. We have two main types. We have ionic bonds and we have covalent bonds. We're going to talk more about covalent bonds later, but essentially covalent bonds are sharing of electrons. Whereas ionic bonds result from transferring electrons. And we're going to look specifically at that transferring of electrons. Quick review when we talk about ions, remember that a metal forms a cation by losing electrons, resulting then in a positive charge. Remember, cats are positive. Nonmetals tend to form anions by gaining electrons, and therefore they have a negative charge. So a little bit more review. Uh, if we look at some group 1 elements, potassium, sodium, lithium, and rubidium, and look at their electron configurations, one of the things that we'll notice is they all share the same number of valence electrons. They all have one valence electron. So if we're going to draw the electron dot diagram for anything from group 1, we'd say x, whatever element, with one valence electron. Remember, if we look at element 7a, remember the halogens, fluorine has 7, because remember, valence electrons are the outermost energy level. So 3s and 3p, 4s, 4p, 5s, and 5p. So when you notice, there are seven valence electrons for each of them. So any element in group 7a would have seven valence electrons. Remember, we can predict valence electrons from the periodic table very simply. If it's in group 1a, it has one. If it's in group 2a, it has two. If we jump over to group 13, it has three. 14 has four. Remember, our transition metals is going to have a varied number, so we're not going to be able to predict them. We're not going to be able to predict them as easily. If we look at ionic bonds using Lewis dot structures, let's first take sodium. Sodium's in group one, so it has one valence electron. And let's pair that with chlorine, a halogen with seven valence electrons. Sodium has one. It needs. 7. So since 1 is less than 7, if you have something, you can lose it. So sodium is going to give up its one valence electron, but that one valence electron will be given to chlorine. Because chlorine has 7, it needs 1, so it's going to want to gain. So the resulting compound is NaCl. Let's, take another, let's look at another example. Magnesium group 2 element, and fluorine, again, a group 7 element. Well, magnesium has 2, needs 6, so it'll lose their 2. Fluorine has 7, needs 1, so it's going to gain 1. So magnesium can give up 1. Magnesium can give up one of its valence electrons to fluorine, but it can't give a second electron because at this point, Fluorine is full. It has all eight. So what can we do? Well, given the fact that there's millions and billions of atoms floating around, there's going to be another fluorine atom. Again, this fluorine atom will still have seven valence electrons. So magnesium can donate a second atom to this fluorine. This is going to result in two fluorine atoms and one magnesium. This is where we get the chemical formula MgF2. This 2 tells us the number of atoms in the compound. If we look back up at NaCl, the formula is going to be NaCl because there's one atom of sodium, one atom of chlorine. Let's look at another example. Let's look at sodium with one valence electron and oxygen with six valence electrons. Sodium is going to want to lose the electron, so sodium will give up this electron to oxygen. Oxygen still doesn't have seven. It now has, 
or it still doesn't have eight. It still has. It only has seven. So it's not done. It needs to gain another ox another electron. Originally we had. Originally we had six. We needed two. Now after this part we have seven. We still need one. So this is where a second sodium atom will come into play. So a second sodium atom will give up another electron to oxygen. And if we're going to write the chemical formula, it would be Na2, because there's two of them. There's one, two atoms of sodium, and one atom of oxygen. If we take a look at the last one, calcium, group 2 with two valence electrons, nitrogen, group 5, or group 15, with five valence electrons. Well, here, calcium is going to give up one electron and give up a second electron. Well, nitrogen's not happy, because it still needs one more electron. So a second calcium atom can come and donate, but now this calcium atom needs, this calcium atom has an extra electron. It needs to get rid of it. So a second atom of nitrogen, and again we see the problem, this nitrogen atom still has open spaces, so a third calcium atom can donate electrons, and all of our atoms are happy. So there's one, two, three atoms of calcium, so this is where we get Ca3 and one, two atoms of nitrogen, Ca3 and two. It is the electromagnetic forces that hold together ionic compounds. Given the fact that we have a positive cation near a negative anion, they are going to attract and they're going to pull on one another. The formation of ionic bonds is always exothermic, meaning that energy is always going to be released. The formation of an ionic compound is going to release energy. Ionic bonds are always going to have a cation and an anion. They are very stable, so they're going to have high melting points. They're going to dissolve in water or polar solutions easily because of the fact that they have those charged ions. Because, they're, uh, because of the positive and negative ions, they're going to conduct electricity when dissolved in water. When they're solid, they won't conduct electricity, but when they're liquid, when they're dissolved, they will. Ionic compounds are formed when atoms form a cation, and remember a cation is going to lose electrons, resulting in a positive ion. Examples include sodium, calcium, um, aluminum, anions are going to gain electrons, they're going to be negative, and they're usually going to be formed by nonmetals. These are usually going to be formed by metals. Examples of anions, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, and an ionic compound forms when that cation comes near an anion and the difference in charges attract the molecules together.